So yes, welcome once again to VehicleMaintenanceAndRepairs.com Behind me I have a micro bus Okay, we call it a micro bus It's a, a 8 to 10 per seater people's carrier It has uh, basically an old Audi engine in it Okay, it's a 5 cylinder um, uh, water cooled We have problems with the water Water is leaking all over the show um, You know, I'll take you close and I'll show you now what kind of problems we have there Alright this is a uh, micro bus, uh, 2.3, okay, it uh, looks a bit uh, worse for wear, but uh, it's a work and the client just the same. So we'll go ahead and repair those water problems which they have on this car. Alright, so firstly we have this expansion tank which is basically expanded, you can see it's basically blown up. So it means that it's getting too much pressure, we need to replace that tank. We have here a flange, water flange, which is basically leaking, you know when you press it you can see other water is basically leaking out of there, so we'll be replacing a complete flange. All right, and then of course we have to bleed the whole system. We've got to add some antifreeze to it and um, just get it to run and cool down the way that it should. All right, we're going to be replacing that sensor as well inside the tank. I'll take you through the whole procedure. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and remove the bottle and um, the flange. Right, so simply the tools that we'll be using, we'll be needing some screwdrivers, uh, both flat and, and, and star. Okay, special clamp um, uh, clamp tool, you know, for the clamps that are used here. All right, um, we'll also be using a uh, half inch drive uh, size 32 socket, okay, to remove and replace the, the sensor in the, in the expansion tank. And then of course, I use, uh, you know, my trusty uh, 3H drive, a size 10 extension and a ratchet, okay, a reversible ratchet. Uh, long nose pliers, we'll need to take some clips loose. So that's basically all the tools that we'll be needing for this job. Okay, firstly, uh, we'll remove the, the sensor uh, clip, okay, just uh, simply squeeze, all right, and it basically pops off, all right, there's another sensor down below. We'll take off the top pipe first, okay, and just move that part nicely. Out of the way, you can actually see how that water is just squirting out of there just by pushing against the pipe. Okay, we leave that uh, one side. Um, just you can leave the, 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 the clamp on. Okay, leave the clamp on, on in place so that we don't lose it. Okay, that's nicely out of the way because um, this is basically part of the same uh, part of the same pipe. We need to remove this pipe anyway okay so we'll go ahead we loosen that what I normally do with the clamps I loosen them is sufficiently so you can just push them way back so that you don't get to lose them you know all right we we'll go ahead and we we'll loosen up that um, we loosen up the bottom one as well the bottom clamp for the pipe there for the bottle okay so it's basically a you know we'll just it's part of the same cooling system so we need to loosen them up, I push the clamps way back there. Uh, let's basically get them off. Okay, um, doesn't matter with the water running away because we are going to be putting clean water. Well, not water, we're going to be putting some clean antifreeze in. So we'll go and we'll take the bottom one. Just remember yellow at the bottom, black on top. Okay, we get that nicely out of the way. And then uh, quite simply, we'll just use a... Uh, an extension, 10 socket, ratchet, okay, it's basically two bolts that holds this flange on, okay, one on top, just loosen them up nicely, and uh, one at the bottom, okay, and these uh, uh, flanges are basically made of Bakelite, you know, it's a, it's a type of, uh, uh, well, we wouldn't call it plastic, but uh, they do, it does rot actually, you know, it deteriorates and it rots as time goes by. So the flange just comes off like that, okay, you can see it's been leaking there, okay. Um, yeah, it's just been leaking again, so we'll, we'll go ahead and we clean this surface off with a scraper and sandpaper, so making it nice and smooth, so when we put a new one on, um, you know, it, uh, it'll seal off nicely. These sensors, we'll just move the sensors to the new flange when, it, when we get the new flange in there. Okay, so what we'll do here is... Um, we loosen up the overflow uh, pipe, it doesn't have to have a clamp on by the way, okay, that overflow pipe does not need to have a clamp on, that's overkill, but anyway, the guy's done it and it's done, 
um, we'll remove the cap okay and then uh, well I've got butterfingers this morning and then there is just basically three um, self tapping well it's not self tapping it's actually threaded so it is six more six more thread okay and we'll take that bottle off. You see the bottle's fairly new, but uh, according to the client, the customer, you can see it's been distorting. So I think it's just cheap stuff which they put in here. You know, the heat basically mounted the bottle. Or it could just be that the cap wasn't releasing the pressure at the right time and it sort of overexpanded the bottle. All right, so uh, I'll get back to you once everything's cleaned up and I've got the new parts and we'll uh, start uh, putting the new parts back. All right, so we're going to clean up that flange. Um, you know the, the section that the flange bolts onto. What we basically need is uh, just a scraper. I use this scraper here, it's a box cutter blade which basically fits into this plastic handle there. And uh, just a little piece of sandpaper, you know, to finish it off at the end. So what we'll basically just do is, we'll just um, go ahead and scrape off the worst. Okay, with a blade. Very simple. And remember this is aluminium, so it's really, it's a very really soft metal. We don't want to damage the metal at all, so don't dig the blade into the metal. Okay, just sort of scrape off the old just scrape off the old um, corrosion and gasket that's left behind. Okay, so we'll take our sandpaper, just give it a quick quick sandpaper, get all that roughness off and the sandpaper grips you don't want to use. Uh, heavy stuff, you use about a 200 okay. and uh, that is basically clean okay, we we'll just wipe off the dust there okay and there we are okay, when we do put a, put, put, put a new uh, flange on it will have its own uh, rubber seal uh, or rubber seal, but because of the age of this vehicle I will actually put some gasket sealer together with it just to make sure she seals off 100% but we've got all the roughness off, she's nice and smooth and we're ready to put that flange on okay, so here we are we've got all our new parts okay, we have got our reservoir bottle with its cap Okay, brand new. Just discard the packaging there. Okay, nice new. Okay, cap. Make sure that the cap fits. Good. Okay, we use uh, basically a Volkswagen approved um, antifreeze. Okay, which is uh, nicely concentrated. We've got three liters of that. Um, then of course we have um, a flange. Which was, which was leaking, you will see that that is what it looks like, we just have to transfer, we're going to transfer the, the sensors, okay, and then we have a, um, a sensor that goes into the bottom, alright, basically got a rubber, a rubber seal there, alright, so what I like to do with these rubber seals, I like to use some uh, rubber grease, okay, and just uh, sort of put a smidgen of rubber grease on there so that they look it's the same principle as when you put in on a, put on a new oil filter okay you put a bit of oil on onto the onto the seal so it doesn't bite okay because it's dry so we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, turn the sensor onto the bottle okay just remember that it is plastic so we don't want to exert too much pressure okay we'll just give it a tighten Make sure that she's not going to come loose. Okay, that's it. Don't over tighten. Okay, you don't want to spoil the thread. So that is ready to go on. So now we'll go with our flange. Okay. As we said, we had black on top, yellow at the bottom. Um, we'll just remove these clips here. Okay, very simply. Just move that, push the clip out, push the sensor. That's the yellow sensor. Make sure that you dig out the o-ring. There is an o-ring in there, so we'll just dig the o-ring out. The o-ring is still very flexible, so we can reuse it. Okay, that's the yellow one. Just take a cloth, give it a good wipe. Okay, we'll put that o-ring in there, over there, and that's the bottom one. So we'll just stick it back in. Alright, you can see 
you just got to push it in deep enough so that the clip, when you do put the clip in, that the clip basically holds the sensor down. Okay, so now we can do the top one, exactly the same. We'll just take the clip out, the retaining clip out, pull out the sensor. Okay, that sensor's rubber stuck to it. Okay, we'll just give it a wipe. All right, put the sensor in. You just basically need to just push it in nice and nice and smoothly there. Okay, the sensor can be turned, um, you know, because remember that we have the that we have the wiring that goes on. So if we need to, we can just give it a twist. Okay, to put it in the proper position. So now we've got that all uh, ready to be fitted. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll fit these two items and then I'll show you how to bleed out this cooling system because it has to be bled. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, the new flange will have its own o-ring. But as I also mentioned earlier was that there is, does seem to be a little bit of corrosion, you know, on the, on the, so on the cylinder head side. So what I do is, I use some gasket maker, okay, and I just sort of, just to help the whole system seal properly, okay. No harm can come of it, only good. So, um, we'll go ahead. Um, okay, we've got uh, two size, two uh, six mil bolts with 10 mil heads. <coughs> Remember, yellow sensor facing downwards. Okay, we'll go and we put the retaining bolts in. Okay, by hand. Just turn it, give it good thread. Okay, you don't want to cross thread any, any threads. Okay, ever. So just make sure that you give it some good thread, okay? When it is threaded, we'll use our trusty extension and 10 socket. And turn it in as far as we can by hand, as I say. Okay, turn it in by hand. And then we can go ahead and use our 3 8 ratchet. Okay, just to tighten up. Let's flip it over with a tightening. Okay, make sure she just tightens nicely. Not too tight, but okay, not too tight. Um, just make sure that it is sufficiently tight up. Okay, you can actually see, I'll take you a bit closer, how the gasket sealer has squeezed out. Okay, which means it's going to be sealing off pretty nicely. Right, so quite simply, we're ready to put uh, the, the wire attachments on. Just basically clips in, yellow to yellow, black to black. Make sure it clips in. When you pull on the wires, it will, will not come. Okay, now we'll go ahead and we'll fit the new expansion tank. Okay, the new expansion tank, it's got its new sensor in. The sensor basically just uh, warns you when the level the liquid level runs low in the expansion tank. That's basically all it is. Okay, um, just when the water is um, empty, um, you know, it'll switch on a red light on your dashboard to say check your water. Okay, so you can see this protrusion over here. This protrusion basically has to go into that. You'll see a slot there. Okay, make sure that protrusion goes into the slot when you, when you put this whole unit together. Okay. somebody's bent this quite a bit so we'll take our three eight more screws thread them by hand you notice how I always thread them by hand first make sure that you've got the proper thread before you start tightening these babies down okay now we'll go ahead with a uh, star screwdriver or a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, now we'll just tighten them down all the way. Nicely, make sure they're nice and tight. Okay, there's three of them. Now, uh, well, let's go further start and work our way in. Okay, you can see that. Just tightening up nicely over there. Okay, nice new bottle. Good quality bottle that we have here. Alright. And then what we need 
need to do is to put all our piping and clamps back. Okay, let's put all the piping back. Okay, the first one we'll do, we'll put the flange, uh, the flanged uh, bolt um, pipe back. Okay, just put the flange on nicely. Get the clamp back out of the way. Just keep it squeezed while we push the whole pipe on to the new to the new flange. Okay, make sure that the clamp goes behind. You see your, your lips on these pipes. See the lip? Okay, you gotta make sure that your clamp goes behind the lip. Okay, so that just seals off properly. You don't want a situation where basically the clamp, you're clamping on the lip. If you are clamping it on the lip, there's a chances are that it's going to leak. Okay, it goes behind the lip, like that. Just remember that, try and remember that when you put your clamps on. Okay, so we put our bottom hose on. All right, we'll bring our clamp up. Remember, go behind the lip, behind the lip. Okay, turn down. Tighten our clamp up nicely. Okay, make sure you don't have it on the lip. Take it way behind the lip. Okay, and just clamp it down nicely. Okay, and then we put our top pipe on. Behind the lip, remember where the lip is? Behind the lip. And we just tighten up nicely. Clamps. These were originally squeeze clamps, but I see they have converted it to screw clamps, which uh, in most incident instance, instances works much better, you know. So we'll put back our sensor plug, turn it around, clips in, make sure it clips in nicely. Okay, and then we'll take our brand new cap, radiator cap. Okay, before we do that, we need to fill it up and bleed it. Okay, and that's how it will basically go on once everything is um, is basically put together. But before we do that, let's show you how to bleed this cooling system. Okay, the first thing that we need to do, we need to jack the back up. Okay, because we need the vehicle's nose to face forward. We need the highest point at the back over here because here is where we are filling the water. Okay, we need the highest point so that gravity can push the air out towards the front of the car to the radiator. And there is a bleed nipple on the radiator, which I will show you um, how we bleed this whole system out. So let's jack this car up first. All right, we've got it jacked up. So yeah, as you can see, the vehicle is now, um, yeah, you know, uh, has a, a decline to the front. We need to take the grill off. Okay, the grill just basically put your screwdriver behind. It's got little clips that basically holds the grill on. Okay, no screws. You will see these clips on the grill over here. Okay, these clips here. They basically just clip. They just clip into into those units over there. Okay, you have about six of them throughout. So we'll put the grill on one side, and then I'll take you here. You'll see the way the radiator is. Okay, there we are. That's our bleeding the ball. All right, so we're going to be throwing in some more. And see with a nice new clean bottle, we can actually see the level of the, the level of the liquid as it falls up. But you will see it will basically just flow back. Okay, so now we do the rest with water. Okay, so Giuseppe will be filling up the water in front. I will go to the, um, at the back here. Um, you'll be filling up with water through here and then I will go to the front and uh, open up the bleed nipple uh, so that, uh, you know, we can get the, whatever air is in the cooling system, we get the air to come out. Okay. All right, our bleed nipple, size 14 spanner. Loosen up there, you can, you, you heard that. Okay, you heard that. Okay, so Giuseppe, you gotta fill up that, uh, just keep filling that uh, cylinder the reservoir until it's full okay um, you'll see 
you see periodically we've got the uh, water uh, air coming out okay we got to get most as much of that air out as possible in actual fact you got to get all the air out okay because you cannot have air in the system because air will not flow through as the pump pumps it okay because air compresses and it creates a, a stoppage okay and uh, you won't get the water uh, circulating is it okay once you are satisfied that there's no more air coming out okay you can turn the you can turn the bleeding nipple uh, closed okay lock it with a spanner okay and then now we can go and we can start running this motor and seeing um, how the cooling works if it, if it cool. okay we have now started the car um, you will probably find that some of the water will start talking a little more now because we got the water pumps turning and pumping the, the liquid through the cooling system okay but put on the cap tighten it nicely put the overflow pipe on no need to put the, 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 the clamp on yet the clamp we can put on uh, last okay just in case we need to take this cap off again so we will be paying close attention to the temperature gauge okay i'm gonna take it for a drive and see how she behaves okay as far as the as far as the temperature goes okay i've taken this vehicle for a ride it's been idling for quite a while here now uh, the water uh, is uh, basically full there's no leaks so job well done okay, you can hear the cooling fan going off that's the fan responsible for um, behind the radiator responsible for cooling down the vehicle when there's no airflow across the when there's no airflow across the, the grill especially when you're standing in traffic there it goes off means that it's gone to its normal operating temperature once again and uh, i'm happy that the cooling system is working perfectly